why did you decide to write Half of a Yellow Sun? I, I like to say that I didn't choose to write about Biafra. Biafra chose me. My family survived the war. My parents lost everything they owned. Um, my brother Chooks was born during the war. I feel as though my family's trajectory was sharply divided um, and changed by the war. And so for my family, there was before the war and then after the war. And, and I was born in 1977 seven years after the war ended and I always felt that it was very present in our lives and most of all both my grandfathers died in that war and I grew up hearing about my grandfathers especially my paternal grandfather who apparently was a lovely man my father describes him as fiercely moral and so I think I just have always wanted to make sense of this part of of my history what was your writing process like difficult. How much research went into writing the novel? A lot. I wanted to get the facts right. I started researching Biafra when I was maybe 12, 13. I wrote a terrible play about Biafra when I was 16. Um, so I've been reading about Biafra for you know, a long, long time. But when I really felt that I was ready to write the novel, I looked, I looked at archives. I um, I listened to the music from that period. I looked at newspaper cuttings. I listened to radio broadcasts. I really wanted to immerse myself in the period and to try and get a sense of what it felt like. Uh, what was the hardest part in the process of writing Half of a Yellow Sun? Hmm. Everything was hard. Are any of the characters based on real people? Yes. Which character resonates most with you? Hmm. I think in some ways I am Ugu. And it might sound strange to say that because obviously Ugu is very different from me. Ugu is a houseboy who grows up in this um, village. He's, um, you know, a boy. <laughs> He's male and I'm female. And obviously my, my background is nothing like his. I grew up on a university campus. I grew up upper middle class. I grew up with access to education, but there is a sense in which that part of Ugu that is eager to learn, that asks questions, um, is me. And, and there's also a part of Ugu that dreams, and I think that is also me. So I think I, I, I must um, feel a connection to Ugu, and, and for me, Ugu is the soul of the novel. What does the title mean? Um, well, if you read the book, you would know. Was writing the book emotional for you? Did you cry while writing the book? How did you manage the emotions that came with writing the book? Did it affect your mental health? Yes. <laughs> How did it feel when you finished the book? Um, because, because this novel was so, so much about my family, so much about what my parents went through, what that generation went through. Um, I would, you know, in, in, in researching, I would read something about a refugee camp and I would just stop and cry because I would think to myself, that's, you know, it could very well have been when my grandfather died because my grandfathers, both of them, died in different refugee camps in Biafra. Um, so, you know, looking at pictures was also often quite difficult because I would look at them and think, you know, these are my cousins, um, the children who were suffering from Kwashioko, whose, whose bellies were distended, whose hair had turned red. And I was looking at some of these pictures, original photographs taken by journalists who were in Biafra, and it, it would just make me cry. Um, when I finished, when I finally finished Half of a Yellow Sun, you know, I'd read so much. I, um, I tried to read everything that had been published about the war that I could find. Um, I also talked to lots and lots of people and a lot of my father's stories went into that book. So, so yes, many of the, many of the, not just the characters, but many of the incidents are based on, on things that happened. When I finally finished the book, I remember thinking, and when I was writing it, I really didn't have a life. I mean, Half of Yellow Sun was my life. I, I, 
wasn't returning phone calls. I just wasn't, you know, utterly obsessed, especially the last year of writing Half of a Yellow Sun. And I remember thinking, when I can't wait to be done. When I'm done, you know, when I'm done, I kept. And then finally, when I was done, because writing the book felt like being held by, by something. Yeah, it, and and I, I don't want to sound, you know, really precious, but it really did feel as though my ancestors wanted me to do this, that this was, that this was what I, I had to do. And so I felt that when I finished the book, I would be free in some way. But when I finally finished writing it, I remember not knowing what to do with myself. And most of all, I remember being surprised that I sank into one of the deepest and darkest depressions that I've ever experienced. And that surprised me because I thought that when I finished it, I would be happy and ebullient, but I wasn't for a long time. Um, is the book more nonfiction than fiction? That's a kind of odd question. It's, um, it's imaginative writing, but it's based on fact. Was it difficult writing about a war you didn't experience? It was difficult writing about Biafra, but not because it was a war I didn't experience. It was difficult writing about it because I think it's always difficult to write about traumatic things. And um, in some ways, I think that I was able to write about Biafra because I did not experience it. You know, looking, looking at past traumatic events like wars, um, and in particular, a subject that interests me very much is the um, experience of Jewish people during the Second World War in Europe. And you find that actually often the people who experience the trauma, the first, the generation that experiences the trauma is often not the generation that is able to write about that trauma imaginatively. My father's generation, so many of them did not talk about Biafra at all. Um, I've met so many people who read Half of the Yellow Sun and said that only after they read it did, did they then go back to their parents, and these are Igbo people, to say to their parents, what's your story? What happened to you in Biafra? Where were you? Because they did not know, because their parents didn't talk about it. Because it's difficult. I mean, I can't imagine being able to write a novel about Biafra if I had lived through Biafra. Obviously, there are some writers who um, have done marvelous work who lived through the war. Chinua Achebe is an example. It was a really, really good story collection called Girls at War. Chukwe Mekiki wrote um, a book about it. Flora Mwapa wrote about it. Buche Mecheta wrote about it. But I think that there are many, many more stories that will yet be told by the generations who've come after them because there is a certain privilege and distance, I think, when it comes to creativity. Did you... Uh, what's your favorite part of the story? Um, that's kind of like having six children and being asked who's your favorite. You have to pretend that you don't have a favorite. Did you face writer's block while writing the book and how did you deal with it? Um, yes, I think everyone has moments of just uh, what I like to call when the words refuse to come. And I read poetry, I wait. And that's one of the hardest things about it. You just have to trust and wait. And I eat a lot of chocolate and I, um, you know, lie in bed and bemoan my feet. Are there any parts of the book you relate to personally? All of it. What did you think about the movie adaptation? I thought it was very good. If you could change anything about Half of Yellow Sun, what would it be? Um, nothing. Why did you decide to explore the war from the angle of an upper middle class family? Because many of the experiences were based on my family's experiences and my family's upper middle class. So it seemed, um, you know, just happened to be what I, what I knew. The uh, questions asking for pronunciations and meanings of Nkem. Well, here we go. Nkem, Nkem. But hey, if you read the book, you would know what it meant. Kainene, Odenibu, Olana. And who was the easiest character to write and why? Um, mm, that's actually an interesting question. Easiest character to write. 
well, I knew the most difficult to write was, was Richard. And, I, and Richard was difficult to write because when I started writing Richard, and Richard had been, the character of Richard was inspired by, um, by an English journalist I had read about who was in Biafra, you know, very vaguely inspired. And I remember thinking, I'm writing an English man. He's nothing like me. He's English. He's a man. And so I started writing like, uh, you know, I started writing sort of turgid prose. And I think it was a very bad pastiche of Henry James. And then one day I realized, you know what? Richard is white, he's English, he's a man, but fundamentally he's a human who's seeking. And that idea of seeking and longing is something that I identify with. And so it became you know, um, much easier to do. But the easiest character, I really don't know. I, I really don't know. Ubu, I would say. Ubu was the most, um, I think Ubu is the character I most seamlessly inhabited, is what I would say. <laughs>